Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I am going to explain you ideal MOS cap. MOS cap means metal oxide semiconductor capacitor. In my last video, I have explained practical MOS cap. And in that, we have seen all the basics related MOS capacitor. I have initiated that video with basics. Then we have seen structure. Then I have explained some essential parameters of p-type substrate and then I have explained you energy band diagram of MOS capacitor and how exactly that energy band diagram that is structured that even we have seen it in that video. Before you see this video, I request you to go through that video. The reason is based on that video, you can understand this video very easy, right? Now, to have ideal MOS cap, first I will be explaining you assumption of MOS cap. So, first of all, you should know what is MOS cap. See, it is metal oxide and semiconductor layer capacitor. See, this is metal layer connected with gate. This is oxide layer that is sandwiched in between metal and semiconductor. Here, this semiconductor could be of P type or N type, right? And with semiconductor, we have base terminal. This base terminal is also referred as substrate terminal. In some books, they might be writing substrate over here, right? So, two terminal MOS cap that we have it in this pattern, right? Now, to have ideal MOS cap, there are a few assumptions that you need to understand first. And based on those assumptions, you can understand energy band diagram of ideal MOS cap. So, first assumption that is phi m is equals to phi s. What it means? Work function of metal and work function of semiconductor that is equal. In my last video, when we have seen practical MOS cap, in that there was a difference. You see, work function of metal that is this much, and work function of semiconductor that is this much. And based on that, I have explained that there will be bending of energy band in semiconductor. Why the reason is? Semiconductor was having higher work function compared to metal, right? But in ideal MOS cap, in ideal MOS cap, work function of metal and semiconductor that should be equal. That is first assumption. Second assumption is they are based on SiO2 layer. See that assumption states that the oxide layer is having no charges. See SiO2 layer that is practically insulator that you can say. So, that insulator should not be having any charges, right? Third assumption that is based on SiO2 layer only, oxide layer only, that states that the oxide layer has infinite resistivity. So, obviously, it explains what it explains that that is ideal insulator, right? And fourth assumption that is based on junction. So, you see, no surface states that is there at oxide and semiconductor interface, right? There are no surface states at the junction of SiO2 and semiconductor. So, in my last video, when I have explained you energy band diagram, at that time I have told you, you see, when you have energy band diagram, practically there will be banding of energy band with EC, EI and EV. And that band is happening because of junction. And at junction, there are a few surface states, right? That's why this is how bending is happening. But in ideal MOS cap, in ideal MOS cap, there are no, there are no surface states. As there are no surface states, in energy band diagram, there has to have no bending. That is the meaning of this, right? So again, you need to understand this four assumption. First is based on work function. So, it states that metal and semiconductor is having equal work function. Second is based on oxide layer. It states there are no charges in oxide layer and oxide layer is having infinite resistivity. And fourth assumption states what? It states that oxide and semiconductor junction does not have any surface states, right? That is how four assumptions are there. Now, based on these assumptions, let us have let us have energy band diagram, right? 
so to have energy band diagram i need to go out of this screen first so here if you observe we are having we are having energy band diagram of ideal mos cap in which here we have metal here we have oxide and here we have semiconductor see first statement that states what you see that states metal and semiconductor is having equal work function i have told you that is not equal practically right but we are talking about ideal one so here you see practically we were been having less work function with metal and higher work function with semiconductor but with ideal you see it is equal here we have here we have metal work function and here we have semiconductor work function both are equal right so that is how first statement that we can justify over here now if you observe here see second and third assumption that is based on oxide layer that is ideal as if oxide layer that is ideal then there won't be any uh, there won't be any gradient in the conduction band and in this energy band right if you observe practical one you see in which here with free space there was a gradient right i have told you here potential over here at the side of metal that will be lower and potential at the side of semiconductor will be higher that is how there will be gradient that there, there will be a linear slope right that i have told you but as we are having oxide layer which is ideal insulator over here you can say there won't be any gradient you see it is straight line right it is straight line over here and see last assumption that states what it states that no surface states are there at the junction of oxide and semiconductor so as we don't have any surface states you won't be having any banding over here right with ec ef ev there won't be any banding you see practically practically there will be banding in energy band diagram that i have explained right but here as this is ideal there won't be any banding right so if you talk about if you talk about energy band diagram of ideal mos cap here you see this is work function of metal it states what how much energy that require that is required here for metal to have to have moment of to have moment of electrons from fermi energy level to free space right so that should be equal for metal and semiconductor practically it is not the case and as if you want to calculate as if you want to calculate work function for semiconductor then that will be phi of s that will be electron affinity that is q into psi that is q into psi plus plus ec minus ef but still if i elaborate this bit more then ec to ei it will be eg by 2 it will be eg divided by 2 right that is this much plus this much that is that is q into f right that is q into uh, q into phi f right so this is how we can have work function calculation for semiconductor sometimes you may need to have example solution with the use of this formula that's why i'm noting it again right now you might be thinking like why should we have this ideal mos cap calculation see this is to understand how things are happening in terms of calculation otherwise otherwise practically that uh, energy band diagram that will be happening like this right that we have already seen in my last video here if you talk about ideal mos cap see what will happen to understand ideal mos cap if i say here we have a uh, metal layer this is metal layer this second layer that is sio2 layer so i'm saying that is oxide layer and third layer let us say that is semiconductor layer right and as we know we have we have gate terminal here and we have substrate terminal or base terminal over here right so here as if you short this two terminal as if you short this two terminal there won't be any flow of charge 
or you can say there won't be any flow of current there won't be any flow of current right there won't be any flow of current why the reason is work function of metal and work function of semiconductor that is equal right and practically that is not the case practically if you observe as i have told you work function differs over here semiconductor is having higher work function compared to metal secondly if you observe assumption then it states that oxide layer is having no charges and it offers infinite resistivity so as it offers infinite resistivity it doesn't allow flow of current over here right so that is how things are there so probably i think this much is sufficient to understand ideal mos cap right and still if you want to share anything over here please do let me know by writing into the comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video